I go by the Praetorian on uh, WordPress. Roger Hansen on Google Plus. Or Roger Hansen 1969 at gmail.com. Uh, a couple days ago, I did a video that spoke about alternative media, and it also talked about, you know, commentators on YouTube that get on YouTube and they like to dramatize and can create a lot of flair. They get emotional and start acting all crazy and insinuate things. Now, instead of those people doing their job, what they do is they contract out <clears throat> to other people to take care of those properties. And this is when these people are contracted to do that job. Instead of doing their job, they pocketed the money. They didn't put any money into the repairs. People don't seem to pay attention and notice that until something bad happens. That's basically what happened. When something bad like this happens, instead of noticing the obvious and saying, look, we have a failed welfare state system that doesn't work, they just start talking about conspiracy theory. That once you start down that path where you rely on welfare and you rely a welfare state society to do things for you when you're taking orders. Hello everybody, this is Roger Hansen and I'd like to welcome you back to the Praetorian. Um, this is another part of the story that I started concerning eugenics the history of eugenics and at the moment I am on uh, Galton's theory and when I say Galton I'm talking about Sir Francis Galton who was the cousin of Charles Darwin Sir Francis Galton initially developed the ideas of eugenics using socialist statistics Sir Francis Galton system, system, systematized these ideas and practices according to new knowledge about the evolution of man and animals provided by the theory of his cousin Charles Darwin during the 1860s and 1870s. After reading Darwin's Origin of Species, Galton built up Darwin's ideas whereby the mechanisms of natural selection were potentially thwarted by human civilization. He reasoned that since many human societies sought to protect the underprivileged and the weak, these societies were at odds with the natural selection responsible for extinction of the weakest. The only and only by changing these social policies could society be saved from a reversion towards mediocrity. mediocrity a phrase he first coined in statistics and which later changed to the now common regression towards the mean. <clears throat> Galton first sketched out his theories in 1860 in in the 1865 article heredity talent and character then elaborated further in his 1869 book heredity hereditary genius he began to study the way in which human intellectual moral and personality traits tended to run in families Galton's basic argument was genius and talent were hereditary traits in human. Although neither he nor Darwin yet had a working model of this type of heredity. He concluded since one could use artificial selection to exaggerate traits in other animals, one could expect similar results when applying such models to humans. 
as he wrote in the introduction to Hereditary Genius. I propose to show in this book that a man's natural abilities are derived by hereditary inheritance under exactly the same limitations as are the form and physical features of the whole organic world. Consequently, as it is easy notwithstanding those limitations to obtain by careful selection a permanent breed of dogs or horses gifted with peculiar powers of running or of doing anything else. So it would be quite practical to produce a highly gifted race of men by judicious marriage during several consecutive generations. Galton claimed that the less intelligent were more fertile than the more intelligent of his time. Galton did not propose any selection method. Rather, he hoped a solution would be found in social mores, changed in a way that encouraged people to see the importance of breeding. Galton first used the word eugenic in his 1883 inquiries into human faculty and its development, a book in which he meant to touch on various topics more or less connected with that of the cultivation of race, or, as we might call it, with eugenic questions. He included a footnote to the word eugenic which read, that is, with question bearing on what is termed in Greek eugenis, namely, good in stock, hereditary, endowed with noble qualities. This and the allied word eugenia, etc., are equally applicable, applicable of men, brutes, and plants. We greatly want a brief word to express the science of improving stock, which is by no means confined to questions of judicious mating, but which, especially in the case of man, takes cognizance, cognizance of all influences that tend, in however remote a degree, to give to the more suitable races or strains of blood a better chance of prevailing speedily over the less suitable than they otherwise would have had. The word eugenics would sufficiently express the idea. It is at least a neater word and a more generalized one than Veticulature, which I once ventured to use. In 1904, he clarified his definition of eugenics as the science which deals with all influences that improves the inborn qualities of a race, also with those that develop them to the utmost advantage. Galton's formation of eugenics was based on a strong statistical approach influenced heavily by Adolf Quetelet's social physics. Unlike Quetelet, however, Galton did not exalt the average man, but decreed him as mediocre. Galton and his statistical heir, Carl Pearson, developed what was called the biometrical approach to eugenics, which developed new and complex statistic models, later exported to wholly different fields to describe the heredity of traits. However, with the rediscovery of Gregor Mendel's hereditary laws, two separate camps of eugenics advocates advocates emerged. One was made up of statistics and other and the other of bio, biologists, statisticians thought the biologists had exceptional crude mathematical models while biologists thought the statistics knew little about biology. 
Eugenics eventually referred to human selection reproduction with an intent to create children with desirable traits, generally through the approach of influencing different birth rates. These policies were mostly divided into two categories. Positive eugenics, the increased reproduction of those seen to have advantageous hereditary traits and negative eugenics, the discouragement of reproduction by those with hereditary traits perceived as poor. Negative eugenics policies in the past have ranged from attempts to segregate to sterilization and even genocide. Positive eugenics policies have typically taken the form of awards or bonuses for fit parents who have another child. I go by the Praetorian on uh, WordPress. Roger Hansen on Google Plus. Or Roger Hansen 1969 at gmail.com. Yeah, a couple days ago I did a video that spoke about alternative media and it also talked about you know commentators on YouTube that get on YouTube and they like to dramatize and create a lot of flair. They get emotional and start acting all crazy and insinuate things. Now instead of those people doing their job, what they do is they contract out <clears throat> to other people to take care of those properties. And this is when these people are contracted to do that job, instead of doing their job, they pocketed the money. They didn't put any money into the repairs. People don't seem to pay attention and notice that until something bad happens. And that's basically what happened. When something bad like this happens, instead of noticing the obvious and saying, look, have a failed welfare state system that doesn't work, they just start talking about conspiracy theory. That once you start down that path where 